Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to CTSS. This is a series of our most popular cases, and this is part six. I think we have about 10 cases. This is an interesting case. Very vascular mass, right lobe of liver, which washes out on the later phases. There's a little central lower density zone, which actually measured fat within the lesion. You could see that the lesion does persist denser centrally and then peripherally enhancing. Now, it doesn't have the look of focal nodular hyperplasia, which is typically very bright and then washes out as a central scar. It doesn't have the look of hemangioma, which has peripheral puddling. This does not have that. Could this be a hepatic adenoma? only if you were worrying that the hepatic adenoma had become a hepatoma. You can see the neovascularity, large branches going into this mass, including off the right hepatic artery. And again, on the uh, coronal views, very nicely seeing the uh, washout of the lesion, but the impressive central vascularity. When I see a mass like this with marked vascularity, I got to be thinking hepatoma, particularly with this enhancement pattern. I would really think of nothing else. It's not a cholangio. It's too vascular. I guess theoretically it could be metastatic renal cell carcinoma. That's very vascular, but doesn't have quite those feeding vessels, but they could. So that's in theory a possibility, some vascular metastasis. Otherwise, this is a hepatoma, even though the liver itself was not as typical or as irregular as we see in many hepatomas. This patient has an infiltrate in the right lower lung. What you can see is bilateral infiltrates, but you can see the cystic changes in the right lower lobe. There's areas of air trapping. There's marked loss of volume. There's a right chest tube in place, and the patient had a pneumothorax. You know, what gives you pneumothorax? Well, pneumonia, empyema, trauma, tumors at times. The cystic spaces make you think about some sort of obstruction. It does not have the look of cystic fibrosis, which tends to be more upper lobe. Also, it's unilateral. The left lung looks pretty good. So we're talking about an aggressive pneumonia in the right lower lung, which led to an empyema with subsequent chest tube placement, very nicely shown. And you can see just some scans through the upper abdomen. Um, again, you're looking for any uh, coexisting problems. Uh, you can think about a uh, abscess in the liver or a spleen or something subdiaphragmatic. You really don't see that here. You can see what looks like a linear line in the right lobe of the liver. Um, the bowel itself, I don't actually see anything that would allow me to consider the possibility of processes like cystic fibrosis, for example. We mentioned before, but the pancreas looks good here. I don't see any obstructed bowel. It's kind of a very unusual case, and there is that linear line in the right lobe of the liver which could be a laceration, but this was an impressive right lung infiltrate with eventual empyema. In this case, what we see is marked thickening of the wall of the left ventricle. You can see the lumen is decreased in size as we look at the axials and coronal views. It's really impressive how large the wall of the left ventricle is. And this is consistent with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Possibilities would include a range of processes, including something like amyloidosis, other infiltrating processes. You can think about tumors. Tumors can involve the left ventricle or any chamber, such as uh, lymphoma, perhaps, or sarcoma. But this is really not the appearance you get, and you can see it very nicely as you go to the 3D as well. And this was a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy with marked thickening of the wall of the left ventricle. This patient has soft tissue thickening around the aorta and around the left carotid and left subclavian. And you could almost think that this patient have a uh, 
hematoma in the mediastinum and have trauma, but then you track things down and it goes along the mediastinum and the descending aorta, but also you see it very impressively in the abdomen around the kidneys. And when you look carefully, it's not only around the aorta, but it's the perirenal space. And when you start seeing something involving the aorta and the perirenal space, it's not a dissection in this patient, it's infiltration of the perirenal space. You could think about lymphoma, but putting it all together, lymphoma doesn't typically encase the vessels like that and would be more bulky in different areas. What you need to be thinking about is a vasculitis and you need to think about Erlenheim chester disease. This involves the aorta, often simulating an intramural hematoma, often simulating a infiltrating process like Takayashu's, but it's the abdominal involvement in addition to the chest involvement and aortic involvement with the perirenal and pararenal space involvement that puts you really into that category of Erlenheim chester disease, a very specific diagnosis. This is a large cystic lesion in the patient's liver. You can see it's well-defined, it's water density, there is really no wall thickening, there is no septations, there is no underlying cirrhosis, and this mass is large. But when you see a lesion that's water density, with no septations, with no thickened wall, you're dealing with a simple cyst. And this was just a large cyst, which was eventually resected because it gave the patient symptoms because it was pushing on the right hemidiaphragm. This is an interesting case and similar to a case I showed you before. There are non-contrast scans of the chest and you kind of lose the arch and its branch vessels. You're not sure, are we dealing with a dissection? Are we dealing with trauma or a vasculitis of some sort? But then you get into the abdomen and you see the kidneys are infiltrated, perirenal space involvement, and then you get sagittal views of the arch with contrast. You can see the infiltration around the aorta proper, in the thoracic aorta and the abdominal aorta and around the renal arteries bilaterally and the involvement in the perirenal space. And this is just a really good example of an unusual entity that's often not diagnosed, Erlenheim chester disease. It's a form of vasculitis thickening around the aorta, thoracic and abdominal aorta, but it's one of the things that gives you perirenal space infiltration. Other things that do that include lymphoma uh, and things like extramedullary hematopoiesis are two possibilities, but just a really nice example of Wernheim chester disease. This is an interesting case. You see blood in the pelvis and multiple cystic lesions. And you think to yourself, what am I dealing with here? It's a young female. Well, you have to see this before to recognize it. You can say, well, could this be PID? Could this be some sort of bleed? What's going on here? Well, as you look carefully on the coronal views, you see multiple cystic lesions. It almost looks like the appearance of a serous cystadenoma of the pancreas. Well, what this is, is a patient who is undergoing fertilization, and this was the look of harvesting eggs for fertilization. This patient had an acute abdomen that was concerned for bleeding, and there is some blood in the pelvis, but this was a post-harvesting study. Nice example of a liver mass. Here you see peripheral puddling. You see, as you look at the image, the puddling around the edge and the lesion begins to fill in. The appearance of peripheral puddling and then filling in, in a patient with no cirrhosis, is most consistent with hemangioma. This is not the look of hepatoma. It's not the enhancement pattern of focal nodular hyperplasia. It's not the enhancement pattern of hepatic adenoma. It's really a classic hemangioma. Over 5 cm, they're called giant cavernous hemangiomas. The lesions will fill in over time, usually within 60 to 90 seconds. 
Sometimes there's a central scar, and sometimes they don't fill in in their entirety unless you wait a significant amount of time. But the appearance is most classic, and typically no further evaluation is needed. This patient has unusual appearance of calcified discs. You can see it very nicely on the multiple views at multiple levels. It's an interesting case. You can get calcified discs with a chronic renal failure. You can get it with some unusual processes, including oxalosis. You can see it from degenerative change, but it's just something to recognize. It's not a tumor. It's this degenerative change with calcified disc disease. This is a newborn. You can see the bones looking at the humerus and radial. It's an ulna. The patient has pathologic fractures. There are multiple pathologic fractures in the ribs and the femurs and the tibia and fibula. This is a case of osteogenesis imperfecta. This is a very significant case that is not compatible with life. You can see all of the bones that are fractured, even though the patient just was delivered. Just a really impressive example. Well, those are 10 very popular cases out of the literally thousands and thousands of cases we have on the website. I'm adding new cases every day or maybe every week to be more exact, and I hope you enjoy them. And with that, have a great day. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.